Hey everyone, it's Kevin. Welcome back to the channel. This is a scene I created in Blender 3D that features a city centered around all things speed. I completed this piece roughly a week ago and thought I'd do a breakdown on it covering my process. This piece was pretty important to me for two things. The first is that it's my celebratory piece for crossing 100,000 subscribers. Honestly, I never thought that I would ever cross that, so a huge thank you to everyone that continued to watch and subscribe. The second was that this was the first time in a long time that I created anything new. If you follow me on social media, you might have seen posts here and there of little Maxwell or of Theo, my new Easy Care desk plant. I do love working on those, but what I mean is a piece that was challenging, allowing me to learn and experiment with new techniques. For the past many months, I've mainly been using grease pencil, and this was primarily due to work, so I wanted to explore other functions within Blender. I had previously created a city celebrating 15k, and I thought it'd be fun to create another one. So very top level, this scene is comprised of 3D meshes with a tune shader applied, supplemented with grease pencil and geometry node elements, and in this video, I'm going to walk through what that process looked like from start to finish. The idea for this scene actually came from just this illustration here, which is this character moving their glasses and the velocity type underneath. Back when I made this channel three years ago, I was practicing my drawing skills and creating lots of different portraits. So at the time, I thought I would make one into an abstract illustration using grease pencil in Blender. But after sitting with it, I started to flesh out the idea more. I imagine it could be a moving billboard in a city. So it grew from just this illustration to an entire environment. Environment. Then I thought about why velocity and came up with the idea of a city focused on hyper efficiency. And then it continued to why hyper efficiency. And so last year I ended up creating this entire world, narrative, and cast of characters with this city being one area in that world. What started as an accidental creative exercise turned out to be a very exciting process for me. This was a way for me to combine what I enjoyed making with a cohesive story. And I'll probably expand upon that story in future videos. So this city was once a haven of art and creativity, but it's now transformed into one of innovation and progress. The introduction of an otherworldly and mysterious resource has enabled the inhabitants to reach a level of efficiency once thought unattainable. As a result, the city is thrust into a period of unprecedented growth, achieving over a century's worth of advancements in just under a decade. This rapid growth is not without a price, however, and an onlooker notices it'll bring about many questions and challenges to come. The process began with revisiting what I already had, which was an initial concept and blocked out scene in Blender. This gave me something to go off of, but I didn't really like the angle or direction. So I went to Pinterest to look for more inspiration. I referenced a lot of cyberpunk inspired art in addition to cities with late 1800s, early 1900s architecture. I also referenced a lot of scenes from Akira the film, especially for the backgrounds. Once I had that inspiration, I moved on to working directly in Blender. Usually, I draw out a concept first, but since I already had something to work off of, it was easier to just start there. I set up my cameras and then began blocking out the scene. I did this on a live stream, just forming the main parts of the city and adding random shapes until I achieved a rough design I was satisfied with. Usually with a city, it can be a little intimidating to design from an illustration standpoint, depending on how complex you want it to be. But like any creative process, it helps to start very broad and then hone in with specific details. Details. So I went back over those meshes and added structural elements referencing the architectural inspiration I found. And most of the time I worked with two viewports with the left being the camera view and the right where I made all of my adjustments just to make sure the framing looked good. Initially, I wanted an angle that was higher above the city but decided to zoom in since that would have taken a bit more time. So once I had all the meshes in place, I moved on to shading. For shading, I wanted the city to be very bright and vibrant. I love working with contrasting colors, and I was planning on using a textured gradient shader, which is the same one I've used frequently in my recent pieces like this Phoenix. If you'd like a more in-depth breakdown, you can check out my Simple Tune Shaders video below. However, after working with it for some time, it does have a few limitations, especially in regards to lighting. Now, I did find a workaround that I talked about in my anime-inspired city, but I also wanted a way to add 
color non-uniformly so that I could create these dynamic gradients on the buildings. To do that, I ended up combining the shader with color attribute or what was known as vertex paint. This was inspired by Gaku who is an amazing artist. A few years ago, I came across one of their pieces and saw that they used color attribute. If you've never used color attribute before, it's a process in Blender that allows you to paint directly onto the vertices of a mesh. And if you're more familiar with Grease Pencil, it allows you to paint directly onto the points within a stroke. This is different from texture painting, which allows painting onto a mesh regardless of vertex locations. So I experimented with that workflow in this scene using color attribute on the teacups. And if you'd like to check out that video, I'll have a link below. I could see how easy it was to set up and to use, especially for those interested in digital painting. It's just that at the time, it didn't really fit my workflow because I was more interested in procedural methods. But this time around, I felt this combination of a textured shader with color attribute would actually help me achieve the look I was going for. Now, the advantage of using color attribute is that it's a lot quicker to set up. To get started with it, all you You'll need is a mesh. And to demonstrate here, I have a Suzanne monkey. Going to the Object Data Properties tab and under Color Attributes, add a new color attribute by pressing the plus button and then click OK. Create a new material, rename it to monkey, and bring in a color attribute node with Shift A. Now plug the color output into the base color input of the principled BSDF. Then click on this box and select the color attribute we just created. Go into vertex paint mode, select a color either in the top left or by right clicking. And then we can paint to our heart's content. So you can see how easy it is to add color, but again, the coverage is determined by the vertex locations. So in my scene, I've made a textured toon shader supplemented with color attribute. This was to add color in specific areas on some of the foreground and background buildings. And it allowed me to obtain that contrast I was going for. There are many things you can do with color attribute like masks for sculpting or for adding texture, and I'll probably do some sort of tutorial that goes over this process more in depth. When the mesh is modeled and shaded, I moved on to adding outlines. Now, there are numerous methods for achieving outlines and the most notable ones being freestyle, the line art modifier, and inverted hull. And out of those three, I usually gravitate towards inverted hull because it's super easy to set up and work with in real time. It consists of adding a solidify modifier onto a mesh with normals flipped and a material with back face culling checked. However, it can be kind of tedious to set up. And if you have different modifiers on different meshes, it's not as easy to just simply copy only the solidify modifier onto the ones that don't have it. So I tried a technique to recreate the inverted hull method with geometry nodes. And I found this out from Levi Magoni, who is an awesome creator that has lots of videos on line art methods, and I'll leave a link to their channel below. But creating the outlines with geometry nodes made this process simpler. Since the values were contained in the geometry node system, I could easily add them to specific meshes and adjust those values globally. I I didn't use this for all the meshes, I did use regular inverted hull in some cases, but incorporating this geometry node technique was super helpful. Because the inverted hull method only works on the contours of the mesh, I added outlines manually with grease pencil to accentuate some of the geometry. And I usually prefer this so I can have control over its appearance and give it a more hand-drawn look. I used surface stroke placement and added those additional outlines wherever they were needed. After the outlines, I moved on to working fully with Grease Pencil. This is where I was able to get really creative and add character to the city. Now, if you don't know what Grease Pencil is, it's an object in Blender that allows you to draw and animate 2D directly in a 3D environment. So this makes it ideal for hybrid 2D, 3D workflows. I generally like using Grease Pencil to create supplementary elements because it incorporates seamlessly into 3D projects like this one. I really wanted this city to have a kinetic energy and this was an opportunity to do that through the signage. As I mentioned earlier, this city is centered on hyper efficiency and speed. So you have signs advertising food in pill form, instant beauty makeovers, energy drinks, transportation, 
hollow specs, and other productivity oriented technologies. This was super fun because I was just trying to create loud and eccentric visuals. I was able to incorporate various design and illustration styles, a lot of them focused on typography. Although they were all different, it was important to make sure they contributed to the overall narrative. So there is a company that runs most of these businesses, Velcorp, and surprise, they aren't without controversy. Now to supplement the grease pencil signage, I did create this one using geometry nodes. This this is an array of cubes meant to look like a large pixelated screen. It's able to change between displaying patterns and text with the help of the geometry proximity node. So I was able to change it from the Velcorp name to a thank you message back to a pattern. Moving on from the signage, I used Grease Pencil to add particles and volumetric effects like light and fog. Since you can draw anywhere in 3D space and use textured brushes, this was pretty easy to do. It was just a matter of placing my 3D cursor in a specific area and drawing. It is possible to run into some visibility issues if Grease Pencil strokes or origin points from different objects are too close together, so I just needed to be mindful of spacing. I also used blending modes on the Grease Pencil layers, specifically specifically add to integrate them into the scene better. And the great thing about these blending modes is that they don't only affect grease pencil strokes but meshes as well which helped with the overall look. And for some of the light elements, I did animate the layer opacity with an F curve noise modifier to have them fade in and out. To add more kinetic energy to the scene, I created these flying shipping pods and moving vehicles. So the pods were a way for me to break up the visuals of the city signage. I just added these extruded curves with an alpha material on them to resemble a light trail. Then I modeled these geometric pods and had them follow the same path as if they were flying. The vehicles were modeled and supplemented with grace pencil details, a lot of them from the waste department authority. And they're actually supposed to be hovering, but you can't really tell from the camera angle I set. I actually just wanted the tops of the vehicles to show. They weren't supposed to be a focus, only to give the illusion there was some life in the city. After this, I did add a framing device to have this figure looking towards the city from a darkened walkway which was the original concept. The figure plays a key role in this story and I'll expand upon that a little later. Now to finish this off, I did add a few compositing effects like glare and adjusted the sharpness and color. I checked bloom because there were lots of light effects here. And and that was it for this piece. Thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it. Again, thanks again to everyone that helped me reach this milestone. It's been a wild ride and it also feels like I just started this channel recently, which is odd. I also wanted to celebrate crossing 1500 students in my Magic Storybook course, which is focused on learning 2D, 3D art in Blender with Grease Pencil. This was a huge effort for me for the past two years and I'm so grateful I was able to work with CG Boost on it. So if you want to learn more about the kind of art I create and the Grease Pencil tool, you can check it out at cgboost.com. In it, I'll walk through everything you need to know to get started with it, and we'll end up exploring techniques to create vibrant 2.5D scenes that move from beyond the flat page into dimensional space. Don't worry if you're not a drawing pro or are new to 3D, this course is totally beginner friendly. There's over 10 hours of content, downloadable project files, and access to help anytime you need it. In other news, I also started a few new creative projects. I have Little Maxwell, but also Theo, my new easy care desk plan. If you want to support those, you can follow them on Instagram at Little Maxwell the Dog and Hey Calatheo. If you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them below. Thanks again and see you guys next time.